Hey, everybody, an extraordinary guest today from Hewlett Packard Labs and HP Enterprise. Dan, how are you? Uh, I'm excellent. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks very much for joining. Uh, I've admired your career for some time. Uh, it's an extraordinary one and a uh, uh, fascinating time to talk about some of the key tech themes in the industry today. Before that, maybe introduce yourself, your uh, fascinating career with Hewlett Packard Labs and your work these days. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity and it's a great pleasure to be here. I've been following your podcasts as well. So my name is Dejan Milojic. I work at Hewlett Parker Labs, where I am a um, fellow and VP. Uh, I lead a team of uh, scientists, remarkable scientists. So all my successes are uh, at least as success of my team members, as well as a number of my colleagues. I work in the system software. Uh, we do all kinds of things related to heterogeneous and serverless computing. And I have a bunch of other things, but it will take um, uh, whole <laughs> so I'll, I'll skip those. Well, lots to unpack here. Um, let's start with the big picture. You, you talk about not just trends, but mega trends, which That's we're right. living through now. What's top of mind to you, and what is your work, your professional and personal interest, focus on these days? Yeah. So um, everyone talks about AI. Uh, people even jump to talk about artificial general intelligence and. Uh, that is indeed one of our mega trends. Um, and it's interesting that when we started defining mega trends, and, and you know, when you say mega trend, you can't have a dozen of them. You can have <laughs> less than a handful. So we were thinking, what would these three mega trends be? And it was about three, four years just before ChatGPT came about. At that point of time, we felt uh, metaverse is one of the trends. You know, that's kind of over compassing thing. Uh, but then ChatGPT, generative AI came about, and it was clear to us that at least in the foreseeable future, um, AGI would be one of the megatrends. And if you think also about these megatrends, they permeate everything. Um, and when I look at my daily work, for example, applied AI is, is everywhere. Uh, it, it's almost like computer science happened um, maybe 30 years ago, 20, 30 years ago when it became popular and, you know, there are a few people doing computer science. Now everyone is doing, you know, everyone's doing programming. So the same is true with applied AI. It's simply everywhere. I'm sure somewhere in your podcast, you'll have AI editing uh, my own <laughs> work. Yeah, it's there, there today. And, you know, what was the thought process behind selecting these uh, kind of three megatrends? How did you settle on these? And um, you've been involved in the cutting edge of technology for so many years. Uh, you know, how long have you been focused on these? Um, so for megatrends, we really have focus about two years. But this mm. whole technology predictions business, I entered almost as a hobby. Uh, and by coincidence, mm. I still remember it was actually on the East Coast where you are sitting somewhere. Um, we met, it was Industry Advisory Board of Computer Society, where Chris Jensen at that time, the marketing manager, asked us to suggest a few technologies that we think are popular. She wanted to do that for the purpose of editorial calendars, you know, knowing what is happening, et cetera. And then year by year, we made it into a regular event. And I'm not going to talk about these technology predictions that are a little bit different, but they influenced us dramatically. And we gathered within Future Directions Committee, and we decided what will megatrends be. And everyone have their own pet technology. You know, there are favorite colleagues of mine who think health is the most important. Hey, Dan, you have no mm. idea. It's all about health, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end, I had to draw a picture, um, one single graph. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it had... Uh, on outer uh, circle, what are the grand challenges? Of which health, you know, aging and these kinds of things are one. Uh, there's uh, issues with um, um, smart cities and, and, and all kinds of things, grand challenges in terms of sustainability, et cetera. Then the other uh, concentrated circle, inner circle, was how you apply these technologies. Then even inner circle would be technologies 
And then only in the very middle, there were three tech, three megatrends. And, and we selected AGI that I already mentioned, sustainability and digital transformation. Uh, but, but people weren't happy even then. Then um, some people would come and say, hey, Dan, but ethics is a uh, megatrend today or um, uh, it's um, all, all kinds of other things uh, related to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we had to insist that, yeah, these are very important things, but they are principles, they're general principles. So however you do it, um, in the end, uh, it's community that decided uh, what the megatrends would be. And we uh, ended up with these three that I mentioned, AGI uh, as the incoming sustainability and digital transformation that has been there with us for a while. Fantastic. And IEEE plays an important role in your work, and you play an important role in the IEEE. Uh, I'm a double E but long lapsed uh, IEEE member, but I love their content. Uh, maybe explain your your involvement in the IEEE and their role in evaluating these trends and yeah. uh, what, what's next. Yeah. So like with the history of these megatrends, there's a long history of my involvement. There's near-term history. I, I've been uh, for many years, too many to even remember, played many roles, including um, IEEE Computer Society president. I was even running for president of a whole IEEE. I lost uh, that race. Um, but I ended up with a small community that I actually like most because there's zero politics. It's all technology. And this little exotic island, it's called Future Directions Committee. I, I simply love it. And I played the role of industry advisory board chair there. Uh, and it happened, as I said, about two, three years ago when I was suddenly offered a huge shoes to fill. Uh, there was a gentleman, an outstanding gentleman and technologist. His name was Roberto Soracco, who unfortunately in the meanwhile passed away. But he stepped down and he offered to me. Um, and, and, and I was hesitant to do anything, but he simply convinced me. Um, now... To your point, or how does IEEE play the role in these megatrends? I think it's an outstanding role in a way that um, all these different opinions, we all get in the room. You, you, you should at least once come and see that. There's about 50 to 100 people from time to time. And you come in that room, and it feels like, you know, they all come prepared with rotten tomatoes, banana peel. <laughs> they throw all at me. But at the end of that meeting and two hours after which I'm exhausted, we come up with something that is really beautiful and, you know, that stood the test of all these tomatoes. So you can't, you know, come up with something that that, that isn't right. So that's in a nutshell. Uh, I, I, I hope uh, visually you can um, uh, guess how it looks like. Fantastic. And we've seen some of these mega trends creeping into our daily lives, but how do you see them becoming integral to the average person on the street, as it were, and how? Well, you can take any device. Uh, if mm -hmm. you are all timer, you probably are not driving Tesla, but for sure, most people uh, were forced to have intelligent phones. So if you look at that digital phone, uh, starting with digital transformation, all your favorite apps from the past, you know, those of us who used to read newspapers were thrown in our backyards. Now they appear on the phone. So they were digitally transformed. And, and, and I can go on and on so many applications. Um, the sustainability, you know, you uh, buy the phones with the longest battery lifetime. But even then, you know, all these services that are running on your phone, you want them to consume as less energy as possible. And uh, and finally, AI, I mean, the your voice when you talk, it's adapted using AI. There are all kinds of apps that you interact with AI. There are pictures that you take. Most people take pictures nowadays with the phone. Uh, you can modify it. So I can go on and on. And that's just at the end. If you go to the back end, uh, I mean, that, that that was at the edge. If you go to the back end data centers, it's exactly the same picture. Uh, all these services are running in some data centers, hyperscale or private cloud, wherever. They have to be sustainable. They are People are very worrisome about energy. Uh, they're bringing even nuclear uh, reactors uh, nowadays. All these hyperscalers and, and others are thinking about it. 
And then uh, the reason they do that is because of AI, because all this training is consuming so much energy. Yeah, yeah, fascinating times. And the trends are also much more than just technology uh, for us geeks to, to think about. That they connect with, you know, larger societal, economic, ecological yeah. shifts that are happening. Um, how do you see the, the tech impacting us as a society in yeah. the medium term, long term? Exactly. And before I answer that question, even these three mega trends, they're intertwined. So digital transformation causes things to be more sustainable and sustainability enables AGI. In a similar way, it's just as you correctly, very correctly pointed out, these are just technology megatrends. Uh, there are also economical megatrends that drive everything. Without economy, you can't do that. Uh, there's also ecological, which is uh, crucial for sustainability, but also for other things. And then there's sociopolitical, which is as equally important. So all these four influence each other. I mean, I remember uh, one of the, uh, we, we, we are holding these um, special issues of IEEE Computer on technology predictions. And one paper, maybe four or five years, which is one of the most downloaded, was about drones. And these four or five years ago, drones were envisioned to be delivering food and these kinds of things. And, you know, roll the time up. You have the war nowadays, a very unfortunate. But these drones are doing the same thing. They are delivering ammunition, mm. but also food to stranded people in uh, Middle East. They're delivering water where water is scarce thing. So they all influence others. Social, political through uh, governance, uh, regulatory compliance, uh, but also through unfortunate things like war. So that, you know, th this planet is little and all these factors influence each other. Slow down and speed up. Totally get it. Um, so I love looking at business leader surveys and CEO surveys and what's on their mind from quarter to quarter. It's funny how it changes. One thing that's top of mind this year is not on their mind next year in the C-suite and vice versa. But when it comes to megatrends, you know, what should these business leaders do right now to embrace these megatrends, drive yeah. opportunities, productivity and impact, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. So megatrends are not changing at dramatic pace as either industry or even individual technologies are. Mm. Megatrends are there to show to us what is this bigger circle within these individual technologies are doing. So I am when, when I draw the curves of evolution of technologies, you know, there's favorite Gartner curve, which applies to every individual technologies. I'm not going to uh, explain it. Most of you know it. But Megatrends, because they encompass multiple of these technologies, if you will, you are integrating these multiple Gartner hype curves, and what you end up with is something like S-curve, and they go for about 20 years. And when I tell to some of my colleagues who are building these megatrends reports, and I tell them uh, digital transformation is at the end of its S-curve, they said, no, Dan, and they're absolutely right, I'm wrong. These digital transformation will go on forever. Uh, it will slow down. The new mega trend will eventually come, uh, but but it goes on. Uh, it, it is at the end tail. Uh, sustainability is probably of not most popular, but it's being spoke about by all these CEOs who are making promises about carbon neutral and all kinds of things. And then AGI is the most popular kid in the town. It just started in it, its. 20-year cycle, uh, but but it's doing uh, a fire, really, you know, it's taking everything and, and being deployed everywhere. Yeah, and as, as these megatrends develop, you know, I think industry leaders need to start preparing for shifts in talent needs and, uh, you know, upskilling, uh, reintroduction of learning at of these new tools. But what, what else? What are you seeing as needed by industry leaders for the next generation of uh, of employees and and educators. Yeah, well, skills is probably the most important. When mm. these CEOs and CTOs talk, for example, about AI, their primary goal is not to sell AI. Their primary goal is to educate their forces, and and mm. they're extremely smart because you know there's all saying by. 
a gentleman who developed uh, Microsoft Windows and before that, that box operating system, who said, eat your own dog food. You know, you're not going to give your dog to eat something that you wouldn't eat. Why would you do that? You want your healthy dog, you want healthy yourself. So it, the, the first and foremost thing for all these uh, enterprises and their leaders is to educate their own forces. So that means they need to first learn how to use it. But, but, but there's a bigger picture. And it applies not only to AI. AI is in our, it's like a headlight. Uh, deer in the headlight, we're all forced with it. But the same is true with sustainability. Let, let me explain to you. Everyone's trying to learn nowadays PyTorch, ChatGPT, how you're going to do that. But even for that, if you do it not careful enough, you're going to waste too much time, but even more so importantly, energy, which you don't. So the same is applied equally to AI as it is to sustainability, as it is to digital transformation. So there are also the, the broader movement. So um, you can think about the whole skills going away. And it has been happening for a while with these um, call centers uh, where, you know, first there were, there, there's a whole history of that. I'm not going to go all the way, but they mm -hmm. were consolidated. Then they outsourced them to India. Then they consolidated them once India became expensive, consolidated them in various parts of the world. Nowadays, it's ChatGPT and these agents that are taking over and answering. When you call for to report anything, you first get uh, agent. So this whole issue of support system administrators is slowly going away. And these, it, it, but the whole new slew of, of of jobs like AI programmers, data scientists, they are. Uh, coming into the place. So um, if you remember, and I'll, I'll stop very quickly, if you remember when uh, US, for example, was very concerned about um, uh, the old jobs going to Taiwan, TSMC and other companies, we were afraid, you know, the whole digital uh, industry is going, well, that's not true. You know, we started developing CPUs in US, we focus nowadays on accelerators. So it's a shifting target, you know, uh, it, it's typical innovators dilemma. The new cheaper things are, are being um, taking over incumbents, but they are pushed up. And But then over the time, they become incumbents themselves. So, yeah, let's dive into the future of work. Um, you know, it is changing, has changed dramatically through the pandemic with hybrid work. And I guess there's two camps, it seems, emerging. There's the half glass full camp that see AI as a tremendous opportunity uh, to free us of and unburden us of what has been <laughs> and uh, give us new skills and new superpowers. Then there's the sort of half, half clap empty view of job destruction, uh, particularly with, with certain jobs and certain verticals. So wh where do you stand on this continuum or is it sort of too early to say? Um, well, this is not the first time, you know, there was Ludus's mm. movement. If you remember, machine are going to take over the world and people <laughs> were competing in um, in mines to be faster than machines and all that. I I'll give you an interesting observation. So, um, and, and then I'll answer directly your question. Mm -hmm. So we wrote a whole paper on that, on the future of AGI. And, and we came up, a colleague of mine actually wrote a very nice text on it. And, and I'm more visual. I like pictures and tables. So I put it in the table. And there were various scenarios what will happen. And, and I presented to that same room that I was mentioning with Rotten Tomatoes, etc. And mm -hmm. one very smart guy who's actually running podcasts just like you uh, looked at me and said, Dan, well, you are missing one scenario. I said, what is missing? He said, well, all your scenarios are pessimistic for human uh, kind. And only one is optimistic at the end. <laughs> but you are missing pessimistic scenario for AI. What if AI fails altogether? And I looked at him and I said, you're absolutely right. You know, we have, we had had AI winter maybe 30 years ago. I remember when I was trying to do my PhD, I wanted to do an AI. Luckily, I didn't. And it was <laughs> all over. You know, there are agents, AI, um, natural language process, everything. And that suddenly went away. And then it came back with accelerators. So what I'm trying to say is uh, today it's extremely popular in general, and but it's being at the moment limited by energy and accelerators that they can deliver. We don't know what will happen next. It can explode even more so if, for example, quantum computing or equivalent computing comes 
enables it and becomes even more powerful. Or it will just, you know, stay where it is and it, it won't go. Now, you ask me whether I'm glass half full or, or glass half empty on this uh, question. Usually people tell me that, you know, I'm glass heaping. <laughs> you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm overfilling. But I, I'm trying to take a balanced answer on this one. Uh, I think that AI is just like any other tool. It's there to help us. And hopefully, you know, it will remain a tool, make us more effective. Now, obviously, glass half empty, glass completely empty. People say that AGI will take over, it will duplicate, it will create parallel worlds, it will go away, it will, you know, slave us, etc. I, I don't think it will happen. Uh, the, the worst things that could happen is that it's being unmonitored, ungoverned, so that there are uses of AI that are unethical. But the same is true for other technologies, for sustainability. There are unethical sustainability issues. We wrote even paper. Mm. So one just has to be careful. I, I am not, um, there's no uh, big issues with me. I think we just need to be careful and, um, and, and evolve technology, ethics, uh, governance, uh, regulations, et cetera. Well, well said. Um, so what are you looking forward to the rest of this year within Hewlett Packard Labs and IEEE? Any any particular events, get-togethers, meetups that you're excited about? Well, there will be um, a coming um, board meeting where we meet for these two hours. I'm looking forward to presenting there. In the meanwhile, we'll have the new rollout of computer society technology predictions, which weave into megatrends. So we'll mm. revisit it. Uh, what we are doing with these technology predictions at the every end of the year, we do a scorecard how well we've done. So these technology predictions will also serve as a scorecard for megatrends to see. Because, you know, you can't talk about megatrends for 20 years about the same thing. So what we've done with <laughs> megatrends, we came up with uh, technologies below them. So for six technologies below each of these megatrends. So we'll compare these with incoming uh, new technologies uh, as predicted. Uh, we also made proposals for, I think this year, seven South by Southwest panels. Um, I, I made proposal for two of them. We had a very successful one last year, which was about AGI and its influence on, on workforce. We'll repeat that one and the other one will be on sustainability. So guess what? You know, I, I picked up my two favorite megatrends. So we'll see whether they'll get accepted. But And then at work, uh, there's always something to do. Um, you know, uh, there are uh, fundamentally what we do is we try to develop new technologies, but we also write papers, patents. So it's a never-ending story. Before jumping on this call, I just reviewed one patent application. There are more uh, waiting and papers and all of that. So it's definitely not boring. It's, I mean, very exciting living here in Silicon Valley. Absolutely. We're well, right in Palo Alto in the heart of it. And um, congratulations on, on the amazing work and can't wait to get uh, intermittent updates. Thanks, Dan, for joining. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, of joining your podcast. And thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching, listening, and look forward to our next chat. Take care. Bye-bye.